Good evening, everyone. My name is Rick Mills. My wife, Karen, and I have been parishioners here at St. Aloysius for six years. The school children and their parents probably will recognize my wife as Mrs. Mills, the second grade teacher's assistant. I'm a member of the local Knights of Columbus Council located here at St. Aloysius and have been part of the, this uh, Catholic fraternal organization for over 30 years. I'd like to tell you a little bit about us tonight. Before I do, thank you, Father Stoltz, for giving me these few minutes up here. And I will add that Father Stoltz and our deacons are also members of the Knights of Columbus. When hearing the name Knights of Columbus or KFC, you may wonder what we as individuals and our families do. To summarize, we simply follow our motto, charity is a duty, not a courtesy. Working under this guiding principle, we support St. Aloysius and the community through various activities, Special Olympics, our Father's House, which is for the addiction or the recovery from the addiction of drugs, the annual free throw competition for the parish children. We help support two of our local seminarians. We assist at the annual picnic in the Jazzy Jar booth. We do fundraising for individuals with intellectual disabilities in several ways, including the Tootsie Roll sales and just uh, donations from last week. We supported the capital campaign drive. We do the Coats for Kids program, the Life Activities program, such as the Baby Bottle Boomerang that just ended last week. We implemented an outreach program for those in our parish needing assistance during COVID. We support our National Leave No Neighbor Behind program. And we have a multitude of other parish activities, community activities that we serve in. Locally, we provide about 10,000 hours of parish and community service hours per year. Our council membership is now 100 members strong. Here at St. Aloysius alone, I should add. And there's probably 14 or 15 councils like us in the city of Louisville. Locally, we provide, excuse me, at the international level, the Knights donated $187 million in cash to charities, and we provided 77 million hours of service, which was estimated at over $2 billion in cash equivalents. So if you're looking for a way to get involved in an organization to help serve both the church and the community, we can help you find a way. If you have any questions, I'll be back at the back of church with some of my fellow knights tonight. We can ask, uh, answer any of your questions and provide you with some more details. Also, you may have received a flock note message or saw in the bulletin. We're hosting a Catholic Fraternal Benefits Night this Tuesday, November 9th, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the school cafeteria. This is an overview of the nights, and it's what we do. It's completely educational. There's no, no commitments. You hear more about the Knights of Columbus, how it was founded in principles of charity, unity, and fraternity. This was done in 1882 by Father McGivney up in New Haven, Connecticut, and a few of his parishioners. And I should add that Father McGivney was deemed blessed by the Pope and is, is one step closer to canonization now as a saint. So thank you again for your continued support. Also, we have several thousand Tootsie Rolls left over, so come to the back of church and I'll be happy to hand you a few for free. Uh, we're also going to be selling the Christmas cards again. They're under limited supply this year, so get them while you can. They won't be around for long. Thank you again and have a wonderful evening. Good evening, and welcome to St. Aloysius on this 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Intentions for this Mass, Louis, Louis Greenwald, Fred Rufra III, and Emily and George Felty, 17th anniversary. Greetings for today's Mass can be found number 1074 in the hymnal, 1074, and our gathering hymn is number 741, all are welcome, number 741. Please join us. Let us 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you died to take away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you rose again to bring new life to your people. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to generosity of heart. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, 
we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion from age to age.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have to had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus told the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honors in the synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers they will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
culture often dictates the style and behavior very similar to those of the scribes in today's gospel, wearing nice clothes, taking places of honor, and had reciting lengthy prayers. But worship of God may and should include beauty and fine things, but the core of the worship truly depends upon what's inside each and every one of us. We have two stories about widows today who are willing to give up the last of their media supplies or money to help someone else. Our first reading today tells the story of the widow who was at where there was a great crowd in the land. And the reason for this was that the Israelites were worshiping the god Baal. Now this pagan was the god of fertility. They believed that Baal would bring about rain and fertilize the land. But the Israelites' God, Yahweh, has withheld the rain to show them that he is the one and only true God with the power over both rain and sunshine. Now the prophet Elijah meets a poor widow and he asks her for a cup of water and something to eat. So she explains her plight to him. She's down to her last handful of flour and a tiny bit of oil. She's about to try to fix something for her and her son to eat and then she was certain that this would be her last meal. So Elijah reassures her and tells her that she will not suffer from want. So she trusts in him and does as he asks by preparing a small cake of bread for him to eat and bringing him a cup of water. God miraculously fulfills the prophet's promise for the widow. For the woman's jug of oil and fire do not run out for the entire time of the drought. Now this widow was very much like the poor widow in our gospel today, who willingly gave everything she has, two coins, only worth a few cents to the temple. Perspective is quite important when we judge others, which we are naturally inclined to do from time to time. From, for many rich people, they, our perspective is that poor folks are lazy and ambitious. For many poor folks, their perspective is that rich people are greedy and dishonest. But from experience, we know that both rich and poor people who have actions that may fall into these stereotypes. But there are also many of us and many of those people who do not fall into either one of those stereotypes. Today's gospel is a comparison, though, between rich people and poor people. And Jesus tosses aside any stereotypes that we may have. His teaching paints a picture of rich people who are not rich at all, but very poor in what counts the most, and a poor widow who is rich in her self-giving. The rich are condemned not for being rich, but for lacking in self-giving. And the widow is praised not for being poor, but for contributing all she had through her self-giving. Surprisingly, the large sums of money given by the rich people paled in comparison to the widow's far greater gift of two small coins. For she gave her all, her whole livelihood. She exemplifies a life of self-giving. And this is the way of discipleship, that we should give our all to the Lord. This widow, by not holding back the little she had, is a model for radical demand of discipleship. The abusive describes have it all now. They had their status, their clothes, seats of honor, power, and wealth. But they wind up losing everything in the end. While the poor widow, who has little and surrenders even that, ends up gaining everything. So it is with anyone who are followers of Jesus Christ. Like Christ, if we all give up our now, we will gain the everything later on through the reward of eternal life in heaven. The gospel challenges our perspective. It contrasts, describes insincere and self-serving behavior with the widow's honest and self-giving action. Normally, we would discount the widow's gift of just a few cents as trivial, but Jesus rates her contribution as the greatest gift of all. For it is not the size of the gift that, and its measures that is value, 
but it's the depth of the self-giving from which it comes. This is the kind of giving Jesus encourages us to embrace by his praise of the widow. When we are honestly self-giving, Jesus will praise us as well. Placing ourselves at the center of worldly values, status, clothes, seats of honor, power, and wealth gains us nothing but condemnation. Surrendering ourselves as disciples at the service of others and living a life of self-giving gains us salvation. We would like to believe that we are like the widow from today's gospel, who willingly gives up what little she has just to help others. We are about to embark on the season of giving, where at most stores there's a person standing outside ringing a bell with a tiny little red kettle beside them. And our mailboxes for the last few months have seen regular requests for small donations from anywhere from five to $25 just to help out a worthy cause. Many of us tried to pace ourselves and we tried to have a dollar or some change drop into the kettle. And then we also ask, try to send some money back to these organizations. But is that really enough? Are we acting like the widow and giving from our heart all that we have? Or are we holding back on how much we are giving and instead are giving only from our excess? We can easily be fooled about where our hearts truly lie. How easily we lose sight of a disciple's perspective. We might look at the widow's giving at all she has as a foreshadowing of Jesus giving his all on the cross for us on Calvary. The good news is that when we surrender our all, we are most like Jesus. When we surrender our all, we are truly his disciples. When we give our all, we will never run out of something of ourselves to give, for God is the one who is always there to provide to us. Pastoral mystery reminds us that if we rely on ourselves and amass our own true measures, we'll lose everything. But if we surrender ourselves to loving self-sacrifice, we will gain everything because God always provides abundantly for those who are faithful followers of his son, Jesus Christ. That choice is ours to make. Discipleship does not mean that we necessarily do big and heroic things, but it does mean that we will do everything we can and meet whatever challenges comes our way with our hearts set on the right when we give of ourselves for the good of others. Discipleship means that we will understand full well what the cost of following Jesus is, but it also means that we understand that no cost compare to just how God loves me takes care of us. Discipleship means that we have God's perspective. Each person we meet is worth our all. There is no generosity unless there is a cost. True generosity occurs when a person with meager resources contributes to a disaster fund, or an already too busy executive stops and truly listens to an employee or maybe a person who at the end of a hard work week gives up his weekend to help a neighbor winterize their house or rake their yard. These examples match the true generosity of the poor widow when she gave all she had. Jesus praised her because she does not turn back from that cost of the generosity. Generosity is not the matter of mere giving, but it is the matter of self-gift, but sparks true generosity is recognition and openness to another's need. We are truly generous when we respond to the need of others with self-giving from the depths of our own hearts. For when we respond with costly generosity, we too will be truly praised by Jesus Christ.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, I from life, true God from true God. I am not made, because of sin shall with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and as far as salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, come to the Virgin Mary. Amen. Our crucified, and his father, he suffered died for his grave, and rose again on the third day, according with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is Lord of all God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Life the world to come. We heard in the psalm that God brings justice to the oppressed, food to the hungry, and freedom to those in captivity. So let us turn to God with our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, we may reach out to the poor and destitute with the generosity of the widow in today's reading, the generosity of generations of faithful people eager to help our brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the riches of this bountiful people in it may be in the world, and that never again will anyone live with the anxiety of being unable to afford to feed their families or themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For widows and widowers, that they may be comforted in their loss and supported in their hardship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may always be open to the Lord's call to service and respond willingly and generously to that call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those we serve through our charitable giving, that our commitment to stewardship may grow, cheerfully giving back to God from the many gifts we have received. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Harriet O'Daniel, mother of Adam O'Daniel, and niece of Father Jack Caldwell, and Alice Reville, and Joey Sutherland, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Generous God, you have given us life, given us love, and through the sacrifice of your Son, given us salvation from our sins. Impel us to pass on what we have received as we encounter your Son in the hungry, the homeless, the naked, the imprisoned, and the poor, as we pray for all our needs, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 616 in your books, I Has Not Seen. Number 616. Oh, my God. 
Great sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the work, power, and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. Uh, for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Aloysius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not to temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all for each other a sign of Christ's peace. Take 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please stand. Number 584, for the beauty of the earth. Number 584. I'm sorry, 548. Number 548.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the ministers who are taking communion to the homebound, please come forward. I'd like to invite over Wayne Gillum, who would like to uh, present to us an opportunity. And so, Wayne, please come to the microphone and speak. Thank you, Father. It's good to be home again, and good to see so many familiar faces. I'll only take a few minutes, I promise. Uh, I'm representing or working with Hand in Hand Ministries, which uh, many of you know about. Um, I come today with uh, three questions. How many of you have ever slept out under the stars? except for not, not counting a um, camping trip. <laughs> okay, how many of you always had a roof over your head, had safety and warmth and everything? Raise your hand if, you, if that's true for you, okay? I think most of us could say that, okay? Um, well, uh, we also know that um, there's... Um, well, you may not know this, but I, I, um, I was a missionary, missionary for um, eight years. Now, I'm not asking you to give eight years of your time, but I'm asking you to give one week of your time, six days, in Belize. And there's some of you out there. How many of you have ever been to Belize or uh, Eastern Kentucky for mission trips? Okay, so several of you have. Okay. Um, we're going to be building a house in February. So this gives you an opportunity to get out of the cold weather here and go with us to Belize. And we'll spend six days there building a house and putting a roof over someone's head who do not have shelter from the storms. So if you're that kind of person that wants to do that, or you, you may be that kind of person that has the uh, funds to help some, someone else who can physically go, uh, we ask that you join us uh, for uh, the 20th to the 26th in September. Did I say September? I said September. February, February. Remember those cold months of the year. Um, that's basically what uh, sometimes people say, well, I don't have any skills. You don't have to be a professional carpenter. You don't have to be a professional electrician. All you have to have is a willing heart. So if you're interested in that and you want to meet with me, I'll be right over here in this neck of the woods after Mass and I've got some brochures. Uh, and we can talk and refer and if you don't have time tonight uh, if you got uh, dinner plans just come by and I'll give you a card and we can talk later on the phone okay thank you again father and good to see everybody again thank you so much for your time daylight savings time begins tonight so remember to turn your clocks back one hour The, we will also need volunteers to help clean the church after Mass. If you're able to help, that would be great. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by fight. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Number 750, God of Day and God of Darkness. It really is 750. <laughs>
Fresh to 